are able to see both on a chart their individual utilization. We've got a red line here showing what the target utilization. This resource, John Doe, typically should be working 20 hours a week and where he currently sits for each of these weeks historically. And we can also view this as tabular data. We're going to build a custom GPT and connect it to Airtable as a backend data source. So we can pull that information into our GPT and then be able to render that as charts and tables. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we help businesses get implemented on software and integrated to their various business applications. So one of the first questions you might have is why would we want to take our Airtable data for reporting inside of ChatGPT? There's a couple reasons for this. One is Airtable does have capabilities for reporting. You can do this through their interfaces and there's some extensions as well. However, typically data reporting is not a real strength of Airtable. Oftentimes for our client, we're often taking data outside of Airtable and visualizing it with a tool like Google Data Studio. Another reason is you might have business stakeholders that don't actually have licenses to Airtable and you want to make it easy for them to be able to see reports and they might already be using ChatGPT on a daily basis. So let's start with how the end user might actually see this. We've built a custom GPT. I've called it Airtable Reports, but probably you'd name it based on your business. Now at Automation Helpers, we're a services business, so we're always keeping close eye on utilization. We're checking on team members to see who has available capacity if we have new projects and new tasks kicking off. So I'm going to ask my GPT here for utilization for John Doe, John Doe being one of the team members that we have. Now to get started, you might have to confirm to say, yes, it's okay that we talk to Airtable table. And so what it does in the background is it talks to Airtable's API. It pulls our data and we're able to see both on a chart, their individual utilization. We've got a red line here showing what the target utilization, this resource John Doe typically should be working 20 hours a week and where he currently sits for each of these weeks historically. And we can also view this as tabular data. So first let's go ahead and talk about how we actually set up our data inside of Airtable so you can do something similar. So here I've got my team resources table and and these are going to be all the different team members that we have. They're not necessarily users of Airtable, but we wanna be tracking their capacity. And so all we're doing right here is we're tracking their name and then their available capacity each week. Now you can add lots of different fields if you want, but we don't need all of that information for this particular report. By the way, we generated all of this data to begin with, with ChatGPT. So if you ever find yourself creating demo data, it's really easy to be able to do that inside of ChatGPT. Now on our tasks table, we have a series of tasks. We have a name for the task, we've got a time log, representing how much time that we're actually working on this task. We've got a link to our resource, our team resources table. And so we've got an individual resource identified for each one of these tasks. We have the date that they worked on this task or that is due. We have a resource name, which I'll talk about in just a moment here. And then we have our target utilization over here that we have as a lookup. This is pulling this from that team resources table. Now let's go behind the scenes and see how we can edit our GPT. So I'm gonna click up here and we'll go to edit our GPT. And this is where we actually configure the GPT itself. So we can click on this configuration screen. And here's where we have a series of instructions. And we also have an action that talks to Airtable's API. Now I'll give you a heads up that it's a little bit complicated to get that action set up, the specific schema that you need. So what we've done is we've packaged up both the instructions and the schema itself you can head on over to our website in the link in the description below where you can access this information for free to get up and running on building your own report. So the details of this GPT are really in the instructions themselves. Let's expand this open here and take a look. So we're explaining, hey, the purpose of this is for you to report on this data. So we're giving some high level instructions. We're giving the base ID because this is needed in order to be able to process the data via the API. And then here's the process that we're following once we're making that API call. So when a user is asking for utilization, like John Doe we used in our example, then we're going to filter that API call based on the resource name to see if it contains John Doe. And notice that I'm using a formula to be able to find this because here's how it works. When you're using the API, the way that you actually filter to get only a subset of the tasks, we don't wanna grab all of the tasks in the application because there could be thousands of tasks. So we're trying to pull them specifically for John Doe. And the way that Airtable has us do that for the API is to use a formula like this to be able to pull the information. Now, I want to show you this. You, you see this mentioned something about type coercion here, and I'll show you why in just a second. So inside of Airtable, I'm gonna show you how this formula works here, because if I go ahead and edit this field, if I have a formula and we're pulling from something like a lookup, it doesn't actually interpret that information itself as text. 
which is kind of unfortunate how it works. So for example, if I pulled this out and we just said, hey, go ahead and search John within the resource name here, it's gonna throw an error because it doesn't actually treat that lookup itself as text. But simply by putting an empty string here and concatenating this information, that's a signal to Airtable to say, oh, treat this like text, in which case you can see it's returning this one because it finds John Doe. And so it's saying, aha, we found this individual resource. So back here, this is why we have that instruction to be able to say, hey, if you wanna be able to search for this John Doe, we need to do a little bit of extra legwork here. Now in the second step, by default, once it's retrieved information from an API, it's just going to try to toss the data on the page and it's going to do the typing thing. So you're looking at each record being typed. In this case, we don't want it to just say, hey, here's the tasks that John Doe has. Now, if we're doing a different kind of report and we say, what overdue tasks does John have? It might make sense to actually render them on the page. In this case, we don't care about that. We care about the utilization. So I'm instructing it, don't actually print this data to the screen. Instead, make the calculations that we need before we move on. Now here's the really cool part about ChatGPT is that we can handle complex aggregation just by telling it what to do. And that's the part that's a little bit trickier inside of Airtable. So in this case, we're saying aggregate all of our tasks by the week. So if we go back and we take a look at John Doe's particular tasks and we look at the date of those tasks, you notice for that week or that day of 10-2, he actually has two different tasks here. And the next day he's got another task. And so we don't want to say, hey, show a line item for each of these. We wanna be able to group that into one week. We wanna aggregate that. And so we are summing those values. Now we could do that through series of rollups and we can do that in charts inside of Airtable, but it just takes a little bit of extra work, especially when we're doing different time-based data. And instead we can just give it a text-based instruction here. So in this case, we're instructing it to say, basically add these things together to then render that in our report. Now, by default, when you're dealing with the duration field, it's going to display it as the data comes back from the API in milliseconds. So we have to divide this by 3,600 in order to display the hours. Next, I need to explain to ChatGPT that there's a field that we don't actually want aggregated, which is our target utilization. So if I look back on our resource here, we've got our tasks and we have their target utilization. Again, that's a lookup field. So this is looking to John Doe and it's looking at John Doe's record to be able to say, oh, here's his capacity of 20 hours. But I don't want to aggregate that, unlike the time log itself where we were summing that up. We don't want to say, oh, take 20 plus 20 plus 20, 60 hours, because that wouldn't calculate correctly. So in this step, we're simply telling it, hey, keep this value the same, don't actually aggregate it. This step six is really cool too, because we're essentially creating a calculated value. We're taking the total hours and dividing it by the target utilization to get our utilization. And this is some of that extra enhancement of the data that we can do directly inside of the GPT. And then at the end, we're simply telling it, here's how we're going to render that table and chart. So whether or not you're actually looking at utilization as a metric, I think you can see the power of being able to pull data from Airtable, but rather than doing the data massaging of everything that needs to take place, we can do that just with simple text-based instructions inside of our custom GPT. Now, as I mentioned, we have the information on our website for you to get started with this for free. If you have any questions about automating your business or you have some custom use cases you wanna work out, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.